guys, check this shit out. <laughs> it's another MTV party to go ambulance. You thought there was only one, but as it turns out, there are multiple MTV party to go ambulances driving around on the interstate, saving people's lives, making people feel cool the whole time. <laughs> what if they just always play that really annoying song? Um, you know that Bango Boys song, whatever the fuck that is? Um, we like to party. We, we like to party. That song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining like how fun that's gotta be to ride in the back of that ambulance. Like what if what if it's just party music? Dude, what if it's just techno? <laughs> there's like a DJ, there's a DJ, they're passing out ecstasy tablets. <laughs> Like, you hope that you get picked up by that ambulance, you know? Because cause whatever your trouble is, it's gone. Yeah, man. <laughs> that would be funny if, like, no matter what the problem was, they just they just diagnosed it with, a, with an ecstasy tablet. They, or they prescribed you an ecstasy tablet, rather. They just, they just said, oh, you just don't party enough. That's what your problem is. <laughs> Yes, we made this whole joke, this ongoing bit about what takes place in the sky blue ambulance. That's how you write a joke, y'all. You just make shit up as you go. I'm convinced that's how most people live their lives, too. Now, this might not be such a bad thing. If people like live their lives in a more creative way, that would be cool, but that's not what people are doing, unfortunately. Ooh, they're about to come up though. We're gonna slow down so we can see them one more time. Hold on one second. Here they come. Wait for it. Wait for it. Say hi. MTV party to go. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want to ride in the back of that ambulance? That just looks like it, it'd be so much fun. Anyway. Woo! Starting the year off right with, with amazing jokes. Just, just mind-blowing material over here. You know, the year 2021, I did more comedy than I've ever done. Like, I started uh, summer of 2016 and uh, was on and off about it. Everyone I hear, like a lot of other uh, comedians do that too, where they just, uh, they get really, really excited about stand-up and then that excitement starts to wane and then they get really depressed about it and then you don't see them for a few months and then they just randomly pop back in. Um, now sometimes, you know, people do stand up as, as a form of, uh, you know, therapy. And what's amusing is that those that are convinced that that's not what it's for are usually doing it for that very reason. You know, people that don't naturally identify as mentally ill if you're doing stand-up, you're mentally ill. Just to let you know, okay? People don't... People don't do stand-up because they have their life figured out and they're satisfied with their life. People that are satisfied with their life do not frequent dive bars and coffee shops and 
other sorted places. Hoping that they can do four or five minutes at some local open mic, okay? People that, that have a good life, they don't do shit like that, okay? <laughs> and by, by good life, I don't, I don't mean like, you know, I'm, I'm very satisfied with my life. Um, because I'm satisfied with um, simple things. I'm satisfied just having a job and being able to work that job no matter how society feels about that job, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a, it, what matters is how I feel about it. Um, but don't go too fast, man. You're going 90. There's always a police officer up here. Yeah. Um. Yeah, what was I saying? About being satisfied with one's lot in life. Well, I mean, I, th I think that that's hard for a lot of people to be cool with wherever they are, not to demand more, not to expect things to happen. You know, I think that that's uh, somewhat of the existential crisis that most people experience is that they want more out of life than life can give them. You know, these people are always addicted to traveling and um, changing different things about themselves, changing different things about, you know, their uh, environment. Because they, they think that if they change their environment, they'll feel better about themselves and, and they'll feel better about uh, what life is, you know? But obviously that, that, that solution is very short-lived because, you know, once that new thing wears off, the excitement of, of the new thing, once that goes away, it's like they're back to square one. And I guarantee you, just like any other drug where you develop a tolerance to the drug, it's like that probably is the same with a new thing, a new relationship, a new house, a new hair color, a new tattoo, a new gender, you know, that's gotta wear off. Some people get pets. I have a friend of mine, she's like addicted to collecting exotic pets. <laughs> it's like she's got all these snakes and lizards and now she has spiders. But, you know, you gotta be satisfied just being alone. Just being alone and sitting in whatever shit you're sitting in. You gotta be cool with that. And if you're not, nothing will ever satisfy you. If you can't be cool with the bare minimum, you know? How do we get off on this tangent? I don't know, I don't know. I hate how like, I always think I have something real brilliant to say. It's so poetic, it's so profound, and then I always forget it. But I know it's on the tip of my tongue. Eventually I'll remember. 